What's going on? It's Mr. Mark Levitz here to bring you another lecture video. Now, remember last week when I said I was going to talk to you about animation and then I spent 10 minutes talking about frame rates and never mentioned animation? Well, today I'm actually going to talk about animation. So, let's get right to it. Now, animation is the technique of photographing successive drawings or positions of puppets or models to create an illusion of movement when the photographs are shown as a sequence. We talked last week about the galloping horse experiment and how the persistence of vision fools our brains into thinking we're seeing movement when we're really just seeing a bunch of still images at a high frame rate, thereby creating the illusion of motion. Well, in the early days of cinema, artists like Windsor McKay, Otto Mesmer, and Pat Sullivan began experimenting with the idea of animation, taking what Muybridge had discovered years earlier with his photographs of the galloping horse and applying it to still drawings. So they drew a picture, photographed it, made another drawing very similar to the one that came before it, but changed the parts of the original drawing that they wanted to move took another photograph and repeated this process until they had enough drawings that when projected back at say 12 frames per second, which is a pretty common frame rate for hand-drawn animation, their drawings would appear to move. And this animation style, known as traditional animation or cell animation or 2D animation, was the dominant form of animation for almost a century. Tex Avery made a lot of great shorts, first with Warner Brothers before moving to MGM. Chuck Jones directed hundreds of 2D shorts for Warner Brothers. And of course, Walt Disney's innovative shorts in the late 1920s introduced the world to Mickey Mouse before moving into feature length films like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Pinocchio, and Fantasia. Also, fun fact, when I first moved to Los Angeles, I lived right across the street from the original Walt Disney Animation Studio. It's a Gelson supermarket now, but yeah, the little cottages where some of the animators lived are still behind the supermarket. They're tiny little apartments, and I believe their unique architecture served as the inspiration for the dwarves' cottage in Snow White. And if you've seen the movie Mulholland Drive, then you've seen the little cottages that I'm talking about. So yeah, anyway, like I said, traditional 2D cell animation was the dominant form of animation for almost a century. But then in 1985, Dire Straits released their Money For Nothing music video on MTV, which featured some very early three-dimensional animation, and it completely dismantled Walt Disney's entire enterprise. Now, obviously that's a joke, Disney is still one of the most profitable studios in the world, and Dire Straits haven't released an album since 1995, but when that music video was released, it was obvious that a change was coming, and it certainly did, in 1995, with Pixar's release of Toy Story. Now, computer animation is a lot different than traditional animation. For starters, it doesn't require much, if any, drawing talent on the part of the animator, since computer animation is more similar to puppetry. The animators will construct a subject with several points of articulation to be manipulated and controlled using keyframes, where they can just adjust the figure's position, set a keyframe, adjust the position again, set another keyframe, and each time they complete this process, the keyframes dictate the path of animation in the computer. And because 3D computer animation uses a much higher frame rate than traditional 2D cell animation, the motion always looks a lot smoother. Another style of animation is stop motion, which we did the class lab for last week. With stop motion, you have a puppet or a figure made out of clay or some construction paper or some found objects, and the goal is to animate them much like the 3D computer approach. You start by positioning the subject and then taking a photograph, moving the subject ever so slightly, taking another photograph, and repeating this process until you have enough frames so that when you play them back at a specific frame rate, it appears that, you know, the object is moving. And the reason we're spending two weeks on stop motion is one, it's very time consuming and we need those two weeks to do the project correctly. And two, it's probably the most feasible form of animation that we have access to. You don't need to be a good artist. You don't need any specific, you know, special computer software, just a subject 
and a camera. So I hope you had fun with the in-class assignment last week because this week's assignment is basically the same thing. The last style of animation that I want to talk about is motion graphics. Now you see motion graphics in everything. Commercials, sports broadcasts, video games, every animated logo, every name key, every text graphic, they are everywhere. And because they're everywhere, if I was a young person interested in animation and I wanted consistent work, I would learn everything I could about motion graphics and begin building my reel. Now, am I gonna teach you everything that you need to know about motion graphics? Absolutely not. All right, that is something I know nothing about. And that's not what this class is for. But if you're interested, the software is available to you. So watch a few YouTube videos and see what you can learn, all right? Your lab assignment this week is to create another 15 second stop motion video. The only difference is that you won't have time to work on these labs in class like you did last week, okay? So getting started might be a little bit more difficult. Now, when you're doing this on your own, I have a couple of tips while shooting. First, you'll want to make sure that the camera is locked down on a tripod or some sort of mount to avoid shaking because every time the camera shakes, it's going to move your subject around the frame. Second, you'll want to make sure that you have complete control over the lights to avoid any unwanted strobing. My classroom doesn't have any windows, so this was not a problem last week, but when you are filming at home, you might want to film after the sun goes down or in a room where there is no sunlight that way you will have complete control over the lighting. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to watch out for your shadow. You don't wanna accidentally step in between your subject and the light when you snap the picture because that shadow will appear in your animation and believe me, it won't look good, all right? And finally, remember, if you want really smooth movement, you're going to need a high frame rate. 30 frames per second is a pretty high frame rate for an assignment like this, but let's say you want that smooth motion and decide that 30 frames is the way to go. Well, just remember that your video has to be 15 seconds long. And if you're shooting 30 frames per second, that's 450 images. And I did that math ahead of time. So don't be too impressed, all right? And I know I said that was the last tip, but here's just one more to remember. If your stop motion involves the construction of something, a, a, a Lego set or a model car, or whatever, it's easier to start with the finished model and then disassemble it during production. That way you can just reverse the order of the images and it'll look like the model is being built, all right? Believe me, deconstructing a model or a scene is a lot easier than building a new one. And then this week, guys, we are going to be watching Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This is my least favorite film of the year. Now, I do actually like this movie, okay? And it is a wonderful film to show you guys in our unit on animation. But uh, I get sick when I watch this movie. There, there's, a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of really fast images coming at you really quick, and it gives me motion sickness. And uh, yeah, I literally can't watch it uh, without feeling a little queasy. But like I said, it's a great movie to show you because of all the different art styles and types of animation. There's obviously the classic Spider-Man comic book look, but they're also borrowing styles from the Merry Melodies, the Japanese anime style, the high contrast noir style, which reminds me a lot of the movie Sin City. And then they're animating both characters and backgrounds using you know, traditional 2D cell animation and 3D computer animation. They're also playing around with frame rates. In the beginning of the film, when Miles gets his power, he's very choppy because again, he's unsure of his new abilities. But then as the film goes on, the motion gets a lot smoother because Miles is in control of his character, right? So uh, there you go. Anyway, that's lesson 6.4. I did it. I talked about animation. I hope you learned something. Email me if you have any questions or talk to me in class. And as always, Thank you for watching. Bye.